Hello there, everyone, and thank you for rejoining me here in Tiano, the last of the year, which we're playing as everyone's favorite, uh, uh, Ibuka Masaru, the state of Guangdong. But we got a fresh thing to talk about as we're purging the incompetent. I don't, honestly, I don't remember if I uh, read this one last time, so, uh, I might have. Now I'll read it again. The sounds of scribbled notes and shattered spaces, or papers, scratch like m scattering mice in the furnished room. Sacks, stacks of uh, printed spreadsheets, reports thick as men who wrote them. And conclusive investigations into the efficiencies of dozens of bureaucracies towered in the shadowy office like the city itself. The smell of fresh ink rustled with the damp air, and the scratching scribble of pencil lead cut through the humming buzz of the ceiling's bright light's bright bulbs. Years of obsessive self-training led Ibuka to this moment. The endless filing, reporting, shuffling, organizing, and revision of paperwork, not even to mention the countless paper cuts that seared across the studious fingers over the years, have finally borne fruit, and it was in the office of the chief executive. The lofty heights of the position was a daunting thing to any man, but to Ibuka, who had spent his life, or past, cross-examining government spending and searching for inefficiencies in graphs and spreadsheets, he found the seat well enough. Guangdong's spending had always been a concern to him, and he had written report after report on the topics of poor resource allocation. It was only after the official government documents were laid before his eyes that the naked truth of government ineptitude struck him. There was not a moment to lose, he had thought, spending the rest of the evening into the early hours of the morning tackling the heaps of paperwork head on. A secretary waddled in. After knocking, he was too shocked by the sheer amount of paper already flooding Ibuka's office, without a moment to catch a breath or, or offer Chief Executive a warm beverage. Ibuka clicked his fingers and waved his finger across the room to seize his secretary's attention. See this mess? It's a problem. Bigger than you'd ever understand. I want them signed, distributed, and whatever it takes to get it out of my hair, he snapped succinctly before returning to his notes. I want it done now. Uh, I, don't know, I don't remember. The inhabitants of Guangdong aren't for a rude awakening. Too many of those scientifically illiterate and intellectually bankrupt have been investing our streets, factories, laboratories, government institutions, nibbling away at Guangdong's creativity, productivity, and fiscal health, all while indulging themselves in ignorance and hedonism, defiling our societal and economic landscape, whether they realize it or not. Let those mules blissfully drown themselves in their cesspits one last time, for they won't get another chance to ever again. When the time comes, they'll see how fast they scramble behind their pretty masks of innocence and stand in the way of Guangdong's revival, or a hammer will strike faster. So... Page 4 C is not bad, increased corruption, decreased social costs, increases Japanese expat support, uh, but increases Zujin government support, so it should be good. Uh, so let's start with that one. We can enact education quotas. Uh, but I feel like we should reward loyalties. I kind of like this one a lot. Indeed, too, many of the inept and incompetent have been clogging up our society. Precisely the reason why going overboard with our purge isn't as desirable as it seems. We simply cannot afford to alienate or alienating certain upright and law-abiding individuals who, although lacking in competence, would have made for excellent guards of our state's apparatus, keeping other officials in line and keeping corruption and degeneracy out. Those who prove themselves of immense integrity and moral standing deserve to take charge of the rank and file of the government. A bit of intellectual impediment can be pardoned of, uh, <clears throat> Of course, for all we ask of our citizenry, our loyal recruits, to aid our struggle for the greater good. Nice. Ooh, what do we have over here? Ah, growing in... Uh, oh, we got cracked on a cup. Uh, all that stuff. Um, I think I'm going to continue trying to increase the, the police support. Yakuza is not bad, but I want a lot of police support just in case, too. So, um, where are we at here? So, this is about seven away from the Yakuza, which is not terrible. The Yakuza is not too bad for us. I mean, it doesn't help us... It doesn't give us any more corruption, which is pretty good, I'd say. Ooh. We barely have police control here, which is not good. Um, here, we're six away here for the Kempai Tai, which Kempai Tai is not the worst, but they're not great. We're barely ahead here, and here is six. Oh my gosh, 21. So that's going to take a long time. It's already September, um, but getting up to six here. Before we can do that, uh, we have this one we can do as well. With the computational power increase. Could probably use that. And we still have a lot of corruption, too, which is not good, so... We do want to reduce the corruption and get the police on board, but, you know, we have priorities, apparently. I've got some comms to go through as well. We still have a yearly surplus, 60% real growth, and debt to GDP ratio, 43.7%. Not too shabby. Uh, and we do have a cup of peach tea here to keep us nice and, uh, yummy. RE organization. <clears throat> there was a, uh... A strange aura of mystery about the office as, as of recent. Men came in and out as usual. The same faces pass at registration boards. Chinese names, Zuzhen names, Japanese, all forgettable in the grand letter that index who was and who what, 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 what was what. Kwan was Zuzhen himself, <clears throat> working in the state bureaucracy, and he recognized the same tiles appearing over and over. It was the same work every day, but it was what he was paid to do. A few others in the office had been complaining about the nuisance and nagging from above, but Kwan thought best not to get involved in the uh, fist wagging. After all, those were the colleagues who regularly detected money beneath their... Blazers, it was not. It was best to not be caught with that bunch, Guan thought. What would management think? It was better to leave him to it and to keep completing spreadsheets and filing reports. A few days later, however, and Kwong slung off his raincoat and marched over to his desk. This typical scowl and chatter had been replaced by a deafening silence. Their offices, once dank and criminal, were now brightly lit and packed with cardboard boxes. 
Even those who typically got along with that disappeared with no trace. Their mum was replaced by the hum of air-conditioned units. Lots of speculation as to why Frodo's in the front of the paper sprawled on his desk. It was awfully convenient for those loose ends in the office where money would disappear from charts and into their pockets to never be seen again here. But what were those who worked perfectly well and obeyed the rules? None of it made sense to Quan, and his suspicious anxiety riddled his sweating skin. What now? The Guangdong Civil Service Ordinance. Time's come for Ibuka Masaru to exercise his powers as Guangdong's chief executive and bring his proposal regarding streamlining and optimizing its civil service sector to proper fruition in the Legislative Council. Should a rival corporation see reason, the civil service ordinance will be a handy scalpel with which to cleanse the bureaucracy of inefficiency as well as a display and reinforcement of Ibuka's personal executive clout for the sake of his grand vision. The explanation. Implement more flexible merit-based promotion to motion systems in involving civil service institutions. Which is good. Which I do like a lot, so sounds like a rush day. Cool. Ah. Oh, that stuff makes sense. Cool. And we have 55 votes, which is pretty good. Uh, Fuji to us, obviously love. Muscle Sheet is oh, kind of on board, and Hitachi's not bad either. Um, so we do this, <clears throat> we decrease corruption, improve admin efficiency, which we like, increase the security, and does increase cost a little bit, but overall, effects. Expanding civil streaming line civil service management to all throughout Gawangdang. Which is not bad, but we do have the pervasive Kenpachi Networks, which is... Eh, state, police state, control cap. So let's go past it as fast as we can. And then we'll see what we can do next. Liquidate non-essentials, we'll definitely get there too. Can't wait. Because <coughs> after this one, I want to see if we can do this one. Because it replaces... Um, we're involving the transitional uh, security apparatus. Without explanation. Quan stepped into the office, more tired than usual. His sleep had become more regular since the office's reorganization. He just did not know what to expect anymore. Having Hanging his leathery coat, raincoat on the bronze peg, he darted his eyes across the office block to his desk, his vision skirted the maze of office chairs and cheap beige dividers. With the be another paper question, drilling those short words into the very same tissue beneath his skull, his, he marched, his march over to the desk was slow and grim. His footstep pounded like a drum in his ears, unaided by the tinnitus from living in the cramped city all these years. As Quan turned the corners, his gaze locked into a new slip of paper lying dormant on his desk, like a starving predator at the sight of a vulnerable prey. He scrambled over to read it, heart pounding as he made sense of the characters. Pay rise and account of notable integrity in the service of the administration. Oh. Quan's breath slowed, and his jaw began to tremble as he calmed down from his momentary panic. <clears throat> he even noticed the new faces in the office, including what that of his new boss. Rather, sweat clung to him beneath his old suit, and his skin prickled, pricked beneath uh, the fabric as he stared at the slip of paper. These decisions, constant alerts, unexplained reorganizations, they made no sense to him. The sheer dread had left Quan's heart as he finally returned to the work, but dull anxiety still gripped at his limbs and chest. There was no knowing what would come next. The pay rise was, uh, or pay ri raise, or rise, was an unexpected surprise, one that almost reduced Quan to tears as he dreaded returning to work. He'd have to pen on his desk. Fearful of what was to come, Quan thought to himself after watching the reorganizations and vettings, would he eventually suffer the same fate of those now missing from the office? He'll say for now at least. But fix the plumbing. It's no fiction that the governance and the daily life of Guangdong are the beating heart of its security and integrity. It's also no fiction that there are a myriad of issues that have gone a rampant under previous administration's incompetence. Corruption, ineptitude, and massive inefficiency plague the system now. It's up to the chief executive of Ibuka to solve these issues by any means necessary with the precision and logic behind them. Under Ibuka's vision, supervision really, these ills will be cured and purged, paving the way for the perfection of the system. So tool, cool. nice. An unfortunate enemy, huh? Oh, Stanley Ho. So I'll definitely do this one. Ooh, we have enough here. You know what? Even though Yakuza is not bad for us, um, I still want more police. And uh, is it this one we want? Uh, is it, was it that one? I thought it was that one. There's nothing good there. And we're one above, which is good. We're pretty above. Um, here's a difference of four. So actually, we'll go to this one first. Uh, we're not going to do this one for now because I don't want to decrease any more training support because it's really bad already. 1.5, we'll do that one first. Not a big shift, not a big change. But it's something, hey, 1.1, nice. 19% research, or uh, growth speed, I guess you should say. So a little ahead of time, but that's okay. And we'll come over here and do what? Approved anti-error. Very nice. Happy December, everybody, but one of the comments was, it would be cool if we went and did all of Ibuka's endings. Eventually, I will. It's just going to take me a lot of time, even though I've been playing this a whole bunch anyways, but eventually. Oh. There you go. 
The Guangdong Civil Service Ordinance passes. Before we get uh, start with today's hearings, I'd like to say a few words in favor of the Civil Service Ordinance. For, um, the ordinance in question was easily passed through today's hearings. The book are recommending a merger of multiple civil service sectors and an expansion of funding and personnel to newly formed larger organizations. Complaints were heard from Morito, criticizing the inflexibility of the new organizations and the theorized lack of ability to react to the actual needs of the people that they would be uh, claiming to represent. Once the sheer offered no comment, of course. As the vote passed, <clears throat> the consequences of it already plain to see. A greatly streamlined civil service would allow Ibuka to reach the lower institutions, a lot more directly being able to more freely pressure them as he wants, again strengthening his powers as chief executive. The vote passes. Beautiful. Decreases Matsushita seats by one. Get more admin efficiency. Nice. Increases Zujin's support. Good. Very nice. And you know what? We're going to get cracked on a petty corruption if we can too. And the South African War? Well, let's take a look see. Ah. Split country. Always good to fix fix the countries by splitting it in two. Liquidate the non-essentials. The state's finances are riddled with uses and counterproductive deficits. These programs may look impressive, but an immense liability to us. Programs akin to welfare and state subsidies. Renders reminders of the inefficiency of our lackadaisical and apathetic predecessors. Cav can have easily been abolished to be diverted to more profitable and fruitful pursuits. Nice. And to use this which is not good. Not good. Get more growth, though. We must jettison our economic dead weight. So that's why we're trying to bump up our... Uh, Please support as much as we possibly can. But since we're here, it's almost 1965. We're gonna go and grab some of these. Corner of the mid to overtime. Ooh, economic check. Are we past 23.86 billion? Well, maybe. Okay, why not? We'll do it earlier on. Start saving up a little bit of political power too. 1931. Um, we've this one before. Down in the mountains, snaking across the coast all the way from Chaozhou to Shenzhen, this road sprawled, spilling and spitting. A uh, roadman met Lam's gaze as his uncle's cars passed by, kicking dust into their eyes and impassive faces. A cement mixer lay aside the reeds. Um, their vestige, a silhouette of the men, hel helmeted and wrapped in band bandanas, seemed to sear Lam's soul. They dug the earth and leveled it out, reinforcing the shallows with concrete, piling dirt into embankments where the terrain was low, in the driver's seat. Lamb's uncle held a cigarette in his hand as he adjusted the steering wheel. The ramshackle car would judder and sputter at points, prompting them to stop. At those junctures, his mother would look sadly into the wilderness, her eyes drifting to the shrinking mountains to the east. Home was not far than farther away. Lamb missed the rush of the Han River. The road was quiet, safe for the buzzing of late-night cicadas. As it got closer to Shenzhen and the left side of the road tap tapered in the beaches, the white sands beyond which was a blue-green sea in the distance, steam whistles bit in the air with an audible screech. When they arrived, they decided to eat chicken rice in the bustling market as Lam ate his food. Gavin out across his chops because his uncle began excitedly to, to explain the history of the Shenzhen market. Capital. Chen, Chen Jiteng. Modernizations and porters across the sea. China for the Chinese. More than a child sat listening, smiling, politely at every remark. When the waiter returned with their tea, all Lam could remember was the steam arising from the brown liquid alongside a faintly sweet smell, a long beacon in the long tunnel of darkness. Raise expectations. Ooh. Uh, I said inefficient firms first. Guangdong is known as a land of opportunity, attracting new businesses from far and wide, though if you fail to grasp this opportunity, you are to fester in the dust. Many old businesses in Guangdong have failed to turn a profit for a sustained amount of time, and it's clear that they are failing, in order for us to consider our own vision for a modern, efficient, and capable Guangdong. It's necessary for these liabilities to be wiped out of the records quickly and quietly. While I say these are already struggling firms, and corner them with market power, and there's always the coffers of Fujitsu. And I approve this message. Guang was staring or staring through the window at the commercials as uh, TV screens mocked him with their state uh, static dreams. A Sony store, charitable as they were to uh, downtrodden, had their screen set to the Cantonese challenge just so people like Guan could really understand what they were missing. Never mind a city income or a roof over one's head, or even a place to sleep without cops or cameras everywhere, as uh, eyes ungouged by Niyam. What he really needed was the latest shirts by Ogori Shoji, suited for the boardroom and the door dance floor, or perhaps a nice cycle watch. An award winning design helped secure that promotion. The only promotion Guan was likely to secure was from Tramps and Mincemeat. As if regular advertising wasn't unsuitable enough. The screen's up with the chief executive smiling face, uh, speaking lightly accented Cantonese. <clears throat> Since the Guangdong began, our nation is not at the oldest, nor it's the most conventional. We're not united by common blood or traditions, but uh, by an ideal. Through the efforts of our people, Japanese, Zhujian, and Chinese alike, we stand on the precipice of the future. We dare to dream and dare to strive, united by our drive and spirit of pan-Asian cooperation. We can achieve things our ancestors thought impossible. As long as we continue to cast off idleness and mediocrity, there's nothing we can achieve. I, out of the corner of his eye, Kwan spotted a policeman around in the pavement. He moved quickly down the street, past the workers installing new signs and new cameras into the nearest alley. The rest of the book's inspirational words were left unheard. Probably shall not loiter. We meet the Chinese reps as well as the Japanese reps too. Happy January, everybody! Happy, happy January! 
Well, this would be nice, but I want to increase our support. Unusually genial. <coughs> another drug controls areas in these streets here. So. It's an advantageous uh, position, I'm told. A base for smuggling illicit substances into the rest of the city at an exorbitant rate. Ibuka Masaru traces his finger across the map from one side of the urban grid to another, lazily circling a, a swath of high rise apartments. Over. Um, across from Natasha Wang, a watch impassively lit light from the desk lamp shining off his glasses. The Yakuza would love to cut into that territory. I'm sure they'll try, should they gain the ability to. Of course, the Natasha commented, taking a moment to adjust in a seat. In the end, however, the priority would be to assert government control in the area, yes? Yeah, 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 it would take quite the effort, though. If I were the police to try today, they'd be shot to pieces. They would need more funding. The two men spoke as one, then glanced at each other. The chief executive suppressed a laugh, a difficult feat for as unprofessional as it was. This may have been the first time that he, wa he and Wang had ever actually agreed upon a course of action, or on anything really for the matter. Very well, then, Attaché Wang stood up. I shall inform the Consul General of our discussion. Shall we schedule a meeting for next week? Ibuka Masaharu was... Uh, Masaharu. Masa Masaru resisted the urge to make a witty comment about how this was the first time in his life that he ever actually wanted a follow-up meeting with Wang. I'll get my secretary on it at once. Go, we'll speak again soon. Crime where it doesn't belong. Ooh. Um... I think I read this one before, so if you want to do this one, please go ahead. Have your fun. Fine. Nothing from them, but you gotta do it several times over to make sure we get everything that we really need. 27%? That's not bad. It's slightly better than before, so... Slightly better than before. And we're gonna isolate the firms too. Only 8% growth, that's not great. But, we gotta read about this next one. Soon. That GP ratio is not bad too. We're getting there. And we're gonna wait you know, for Indonesia to completely collapse. Ah, good team. Let's get more than two political power a day. That's actually really nice. George Wallace! Oh my god, America saved! That culture, not doing so well. Not doing so well at all. We only have 37 seats, huh? Ethiopia. Ah, advancements in computational power technology. How great. These ones don't make that sound anymore, which is good. Nice. More profitability. Oh, heck yeah. The same, but worse. Where was going around? Uh, more cuts were coming, less money coming in for more hours worked. Perhaps they felt like that the rent had gone down or that people basically lived in the workplace. Unfortunately, it hasn't. Jun himself would likely be fine between him and his father's income. He might have to cut down on booze and smokes, but things would mostly be the same but worse. Same could be said for all his workmates, especially those without a double income. There were a lot of people without families in the cities Jun had found out. It was a strange kind of despair that overtook the shop uh, floor. All the chatter died down. <clears throat> uh, and the men just stared at the machines in front of them with almost total concentration. Though tired, Muscles screaming for the work day to end. It was almost as if they were willing for the machines to turn it over forever. For the task I had, repetitive but reliable to stay. Not to have go home in the face of relatives and landlords for sleepless nights to bleed over into the grueling shifts. So slowly find themselves floating in the assembly line, their flesh discarded as waste. Do not feel despair. It was now plain to see that the cuts like these were the rule, not the exception. They would keep pushing until they could push no more. Our protesting would do nothing, and so hopes could not be pinned on it. Something else would need to be. What that would be, however, Chun did not know. Here. We're very close. Can't buy time. Oh, we're so close. Oh, god dang it. We're so freaking close. Raise expectations. As of currently, the rate of production of profit in the factories of Guangdong have decreased severely, to no doubt because of the tolerance for inertia and open laziness present in the corporations. If Guangdong is going to ever soar above its economic competitors, its foundations, and corporations must be rigid and efficient in their work. As such, let it be known that any continued inability or carelessness will be rooted out. We expect only the maximum of confidence to be seen in any corporation, whether it be Sony, Masashita, or even Fujitsu. Failure is absolutely intolerable. I think I read this one this basically tied before. If you want to read this, please go ahead. Get back to work. Three more seats. Get more Japanese ex passport and Zushin support and Jap Japanese approval. Actually, where are we at for Japanese approval now? Right, we could use it. Yep. Now they expect 26 billion. What is this? Set of cameras? Oh, yeah. I don't know before. If you want to read this one, please go ahead. This is actually pretty good for us. Nice. Oh. Nice. Hey! We're equal here. Well, actually, we're slightly ahead of them. Should help reduce the corruption just by a tin, tin, tinsy, 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 small amount. Yep, that's better. Only 1% a month? That's good. Now I've got to save up more political power, though. But so it says, and so the Silicon Vision's visionary story begins as he begins implementing his vision upon Guangdong. No matter the cost, of course. Um, and this person also says, also make sure to do the focuses I told you to, which I totally forget at the time of recording, and undercurrents. Oh, I think I read this one before. Uh, oh. Oh, no. No. 
As the Ibuka monster said in his office, listening to a report from his factional whip, he felt trepidation rise from somewhere deep within him. That grinning wretch, Komai, had been busy with Hitachi's money, it seemed. The whip was reporting many late night meetings and brown paper bags changing hands with Hitachi representatives and uh, entering their offices of high ranking Camp Batai officers and not coming out for hours, according to the whip. This has been going on for weeks with no sign of abating. The results, as far as I could tell, consisted solely of an uptick in legislative council seats and emerging pro Hitachi sentiment among the military. Hitachi was getting favorable amendments tanked. Attacked under routine ordinances, but seemingly nothing more. Long after the weapon left his office, the Ibuka monster found himself wondering what it all meant. I thought she was putting some serious money into this, whatever this was, and Komai was going to be bringing all his unsavory towns to bear, but why? Were they going to propose an ordinance, make a bid for IJA contracts? Surely, whatever they were going to plan, it was could not possibly justify the lengths they were going to order and sure to make it happen. So basically, all the three seats we just got from the economic review, we're going to lose Hitachi, which is going to suck, and now we've got to spend a lot of political power to fight Hitachi, so we really have to save our people as much as possible. The rats come up from the floorboards, unfortunately. God dang it. We were doing so well, too. Oh, we lost us. No! Well, we'll get it back eventually. I'm not super concerned about it. The clock ticks onward. The silence in Zhi Yang's store was deafening, only made worse by the asynchronous ticking of, of over a dozen clocks. The old clockmaker's business had never been booming exactly, but in the past two weeks, the trickles of businessmen and travelers seeking out his works had dried up entirely. It was hardly unexpected, as his decades of experience with the Byzantine machinations of the corporations would tell him. The abandoned stores across the street from him indicate that he was not alone, though he felt no comfort from the sh uh, shared suffering. With a resigned sigh, he decided to close up early and take a walk. After a short trip to the decaying old town, he found himself in the beating heart of the new Guangdong. Businessmen and workers alike bustled through the streets, flanked on all sides by oppressive office towers stretching into the sky. Jiang quickly regretted leaving the calm of his shop and made it to turn back, and though went through the light of smog, a closer caught his eye. There are many more advertisements like it across the city, but this one particularly made drew his attention, or interest. The advertised product in question was a clock, not like the ones he made, though a so-called digital clock. Instead of using a face with hands, the clock told the tower the numbers displayed on a screen. Zhang stared at it for a moment, thinking back to his younger days when he first learned his craft and how little the gears fit together. He could not but feel the same sense of curiosity of this new clock, and he wondered how it could display those numbers on that way. I suppose it's a good day for the timekeepers everywhere, but he knew in the moment that his business was not long for this world. The digital clock mass produced on a factory for much cheap prices, would spell an end of men like him. With a shadow in the cold air, Jiang thrust his hands in his pockets and returned to the quiet of his store. At least he knew now that the quiet would not be disturbed. A clockmaker out of time. Nice story. Survival of the fittest is next. Darwinism. The survival comes uh, to those who adapt. Is the core theorem of evolutionary theory the perfect ingredient of inspiration and innovation and excellence and a constant and dire need of rehabilitation? With the slothful and competent decries injustice, we call equal opportunity competition with equal opportunity rewards. With the gluttonous establishment now says hazardous managerial conduct, we call a long overdue adrenaline shot revitalizing a product, resource, and labor markets away from the reversible stagnation. We show Guangdong the path of prosperity, then we need only observe it as it claws and bites its way there on its own. Oh crap, oop, oh, the challenger's there, and let me go back and get that one for right. us. So I actually did read this one way before, the challenger's several times, to control the mind's no easy task, so basically we lose, oh, it looks like two seats and get more corruption, which really, really freaking sucks. Um, but we'll get infantry research and air, we're going to hopefully get to Indonesia hopefully soon, and happy April everybody. We only have 65 political power, so we got to really start, start stockpiling a whole bunch, because it's going to get very, very costly very, very soon, so... Underworld Ascend. Oh, god dang it. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. And we... God dang it. Uh, there are increased operations. I really want for two, so... Ugh. Take a look-see. Not looking great now. God dang it. More corruption, huh? <sighs> of course. Uh, quality control! Uh, are you there, Lee? Is it? Can you explain why this line is reporting double of uh, level substandard product you did yesterday? Well, j thought, John, let me think. Maybe it's because you put half the line of the shift patterns where they get four hours, get home, eat, sleep, piss, and eat, get clean before they do all this crap again. Maybe it's because of all the sprained ribs and cracked ribs people keep seeming to get for some reason. Maybe it's because we're more tired for less pay while fat dudes like you keep asking us stupid questions. He didn't say this, though. What he did say was, I'm afraid I don't know, sir. Do you know? Don't smart mouth me, Lee. I asked you a question. The manager's vein throbbed. And I answered it, sir. I pay to work the line up for my expert knowledge on the supply chain. That I'll leave you to tender care of. I already appreciate all my crap list, Lee. I'll avoid picking up any infractions if I were you. Perhaps you do anything right now, not without your foreign handlers giving you the go-ahead anyway, thought Chum. Don't worry, sir. I'm always on the best behavior. The manager glowered and stormed off. We run a tight ship here. The falling profits problem. Uh, <clears throat> Without increased profits from the start, and therefore extra funding from which to initiate additional projects, current plans are doomed to fail before they can truly begin. Fortunately, the chief executive is both willing and able to make some money for the old-fashioned way when the situation calls for it. 
at 2.1 every single day. Nice, not bad. Even this is going up by one and a quarter every month. So when can we uh, go to Indonesia? I want to go to Indonesia. I personally don't want to go to Indonesia. Well, maybe someday. Depending on where you go, I guess. But uh, why don't we get into Indonesia? Because right now we only have, uh, we have a deficit and real GDP growth. So not good. Not good at all. We need to have some seriously profitable stuff here. Still not good enough yet. 28. Oh, it went up. Oh, that's, oh, oh you know what? That's better. It's better to have the, uh, the Yakuza than the Trials because you get less corruption. Okay, I'm going to do this anyways. Happy May 1st, though, everybody. Ah, I feel better now. What do we have here? Oh, invest in focus research. I want to, but we got to save the rest of our PP. Our PP is very valuable, especially since we can't decrease any more Zuzhian support, which is slowly going up. And the Zuzhian, uh, Chinese Zuzhian support, 1933. Which I know I've read this one before. If you're going to buy this one, please go ahead. The not so grim truth. The reports kept piling up on his desk. Spare chairs and windowsills, all packed to the brim with economic or economistic and empty language and disappointment and confusion for the chief executive. The cobbled together conclusions meant nothing to the well rehearsed Ibuka. Bar covering for an administrative failure in the government inefficiency. It was repulsive and pathetic in the last thing he wanted to read beneath the mask of complex words strung together under a government seal. The stuff he aired the office, and the waste of paper of the reports was no use in informing Ibuka about the performance of Guangdong's firms. He could only scoff and roll his eyes at them. But there was one place he knew where he could see the truth in the city itself. After throwing on his dark raincoat, he emerged from his dark office and tasted the fresh air. The sidewalks were packed with people. An advertising campaign spaced at every street corner and building. Some stores painted over their windows uh, closing sale. Some had already shut down for goods. The people pocketed full of change of goods were a mixed bunch of frowns, grins, and uh, apathetic scowls. However raw, these sites were, they were the truth. No ivory tower bureaucrat could hide away from the concrete. Busy streets were the masks of troves of consumers from the naked eye, no matter how it seemed to the chief executive. You don't look on and observe. It was grim here and there, but with satisfaction, Ibuka knew that a new life was being breathed into the cities of Guangdong one day at a time. The truth, and only the truth. Works smarter knowing it's half the battle. Well, that's not bad. Uncountable accounts, which I did, or accountants. I did ask you guys this, wait, this time, last, last time, where should we go with this one? Or a question of infrastructure. So, why don't we go with work smarter? A truly excel in the modern marketplace and rise past any and all competition. Thinking outside of the box out of mainstream corporate thought is increasingly necessary. With this in mind, the chief executive has ordered the beginning of integration uh, of the economy of Guangdong with the most modern computers available. They give us a uh, huge advantage over competitors in an emerging and increasingly a profitable industry. Not bad. Uh, that's May 21st, any, any day now. Uh, you know, let's go, uh, sure, we'll do that one, why not? Screw it. Uh, not great. Ah, the product cycle. Fuji, Hitachi? Of course we're going to do Hitachi. 5%, 15, 10, 20%. Alright, product cycle, here we go. We're trying to do the Falcom 230 10 modular design. It's a built in printer. It's got pre programmed with basic functions. Average profitability is not enough. That's terrible and it's close to none. Oh, god dang it. Well, we're going to spend some serious political power here, then. Uh, we're going to decrease this one, which is fine. Everything else, we're just going to wait. It's only 10, it's only 15. There you go. Now we're poor. I don't want any more corruption. I don't want to cost anything else. Um, show target decisions. Nope. Oh, happy June, though, everybody. Happy June. So that are the Chinese market. Good. Italian markets. Uh, we're gonna go with the uh, Italian markets. New industrial order. Today, certain factors have been introduced prototype mechanical workers. Stop there. There was no special celebration or measures. They were just silently brought out during the long, regular hours. The majority of Chinese workers have been directed to learn how to use these well. The Fujitsu agents of the factory stated that they expected that these machines would have at least allow the workers to improve their output and become more learned in the process. It's not entirely been this uh, case. In fact, not even near to it. Near to it. While output has indeed increased stress and demoralization has also experienced an uptick. Uh, the very process of mastering these machines could prove painful to the workers of uh, particular concern are those that are educationally deprived. I've heard that many despair of finding a way out uh, soon. We should keep a close eye on the situation uh, if things continue on this. It could be uh, to our advantage. Stop. Innovation, but what, what cost? Working smarter, that's a cost. The truth is bottleneck. 
The book cleared his throat, standing up right at the back of the office of the chief executive before beginning his opening speech. In the crisp morning meetings, uh, heavy eyelids and tired smile would typically be a sore sight for the usual audience of Matsushita and Morita, but Morita was notably absent from the gathering. In fact, as empty chair was unsettling for Ibuko, who had normally advanced his vision between the two men when speaking in search of approval and discerning t taste. Even his partner, Li Kishing, was missing too. The dull silence and the absence of shuffling papers and quiet costs had changed the very atmosphere of his own office. office. We're running out of time, of course. Um, the chief executive pressed on with his agenda the issue of land. The increased demand for production cannot be supported with the current amount of factories. And so he book had coordinated an aggressive and uh, land acquisition initiative with drawn grass and enlisted itineraries. He book began to expand the issue to Masashida, who bobbed his head nodding with grinning approval. The fact of the matter is, markets need to be supported by the right production facilities. And when we need another land to build them upon, there is an issue. So by executive right of land resumption and acquisition, we're going to solve this problem before it bites us in the rear. I would need not remind you, Masashida, that the corporations you work with must make the responsible preparation for such. As Ibuka continues rambling, Zamasushita scribbled notes on the paper in his lap, although quite am amicably, nodding along to Ibuka's economistic, economistic and statistical ramblings. As his mind was at work piecing together his next steps, Morita wasn't here, and if he didn't have the respect to make an appearance before the chief executive, Matsushita thought he'd have the right to know. Besides, he continued to amuse. Morita's dreams had no place in Ibuka's Guangdong. It was quite the convenient excuse, but that was the only one Matsushita needed. How fortunate. Infrastructure with all this. One language, that's pretty nice. Digital Foundation. Accountants. Perfect machine. Test throughput. That's pretty nice. Meeting new co-worker. That's pretty good too. I kinda like that one more. Digital Foundation. But we're gonna do this one next. Work harder. The functioning of the combined productive forces of Guangdong remains at the forefront of Ibuka's mind, but currently production is not up to the ex set up to current expectations. And growth is struggling to keep up with increasing costs. To correct this issue, we'll bring the force of science and technology to bear on the gaps of productivity to increase both profits and efficiency and modernize the practices of our business. But I did ask you guys, like I said earlier, which one we should do. And overall, there's more support at the time of this recording for us to do... A question of infrastructure. So, Guangdong's infrastructure, while currently adequate, is still suited for the chief executive's ambitious plans. Luckily, Fujitsu has at its disposal an impressive selection of electronics hardware perfectly suited for an ambitious modernization of Guangdong's infrastructure. New wires, cables, and servers will lay the groundwork for Guangdong's future development, the foundations of a new Silicon Revolution of the Three Pearls. The tired private turn by making Guangdong rely on Fujitsu's hardware won't hurt at all. Good. Good. A test site close to home. Um, I'm pretty sure I've read this before, so I'm going to read about... Oh, maybe not, actually. At Indonesia has been that unstable, upon Ibuko Masaru, his fingers constantly tapping against his desk. He never remember being on the verge of a civil war, yet the country devolved into a mess right in front of his eyes. But also Japan's. There's certainly going to be a black eye on the sphere, but fresh conflict and new testing grounds for the PTRG. He picked up the receiver. <clears throat> and dealt the number of several military commanders, stationed back in good old Japan. That shows expectation that PTRG was given significantly more freedom and resources to operate with. Losing control of Indonesia was bad enough as is, but if the rebels managed to find a way to overthrow Sukarno's government, the follow would be absolutely disastrous. That is for the Empire of Japan, of course. Guangdong has always been a state about turning a profit, and the war was no different. <clears throat> the chief executive picked up several reports from the PTRG, PTRG team, detailing new armored prototypes that the companies had sent in recently. With the experience of the our expertise of the scientists in both in in around the PTRG and the companies, PTRG, and a little bit of luck to extend Indonesia's incoming civil war. Guangdong will be able to collect all the data needed in order to make a decision on which product to support. If anything, he could use a comparison between that base IJ units and the PTRG unit to drive up the sale price even more when he sold the prototypes back to the mainland. Failing to approve the prototypes. <clears throat> Worthiness would negatively impact Guangdong's financial and political backing and standing. Thankfully, Guangdong has no talent for failure whatsoever. Hitachi, oh, you betcha. Let's look at that. Where are we at for this? Push it forward. Uh, 43, 41%. It's not bad, not great. Ooh. I, don't, I want to do that one, but let's wait just a little bit first. Jungle conditions, yes, yes. Typical, typical, typical. Ooh, they are struggling here, aren't they? You can't handle the truth. The defendant is called to the stand, I repeat. The defendant is called to the stand, said the judge. Uh, between liberal use of the gavel and the yelling from the stand, yet the man, changed from wearing camp by tie khaki to a standard gray image uniform, remains still. Oh. Uh, I've read the rest of this before. If you wonder about this one, please go right ahead. Order, order, order. Nice. We could loan engineers from Japan to... Oh, let's go with it. We'll probably get some approval later. Ukrainian Soviet Social Republic is restored. What? What? 
Bruh. That's kind of insane. I don't think I've ever seen those with national communism. That's actually really cool to see. They, but you know they're just going to get slaughtered by Spare. Spare's not going to put up with the crap like that. I wouldn't. Hey, advancements? We love advancements. Hey, that sand is finally gone for the six billionth time. Nice. Ah, we're here. We've made it. Alright, so let's focus on these guys down here, because they're our most immediate threat. So, what is the goal for us? What do we have to do, like, literally every single time? Actually, do you have any upgrades already? If we be offensive? Sure, we get more attack. We like that. Um, sacrifice R&D? Nah. If we had to, we would have to, but... So, jungle conditions, river crossings, mountainous operations, straight crossings. Those, those guys. And we're already doing it. We're already done fighting in stormy, rainy conditions. Nice. Indonesian summons. If you're wondering about this, please go ahead. I read them before. I know for a fact several times, actually. Mm, this one costs a little bit more than we did this one next. Nice. Working smarter. As we work harder, because I do want to get more growth, and so is elbow grease, more industrial equipment approval. That's good stuff. Is this one mountains? Ooh. Exactly what we could use. Exactly. Mm. 53%, 41%. Nice, that's great quality. Um, that's the case. We're going to do this one first because we can continue working on interest as well. With pride. Um, let's see. Oh, let's get out of this one. <clears throat> of all the places he could have been deployed, cannot call it reflected, Indonesia had been the worst. His lieutenant uniform was not nearly prepared for the Indonesian heat. We still to stand and watch the vehicles in this platoon and practice tactics every day. Every day I woke to discover dozens of new mosquito bites across his arms and legs, which no amount of bug spray seemed to prevent. For all the talk to serving his country and upholding the Empire's honor, Kenneko's uh, deployment must have been spent finding ways to keep the soldiers and himself entertained. He longed for a frontline deployment and a chance to finally prove himself in a command in Kaneko, while as a diminutive man exited his office, the Vujitsu limited local didn't blaze on the man's suit staring back at him. In a strenuously long conversation, he was informed that his entire platoon had been selected to field test Guangdong's newest armor technology. As he was repeatedly told, the tank was equipped with a gyroscopic turret, uh, allowing him to fire accurately on the move. Glancing out of the turret window, uh, Kaneko refrained, seeing the thickly wooded rainforest board on the base and the narrow winding road that it pierced. The wood was in use of mobility in the forest. He cleared his head, he would find out soon enough. Kanko, or Kanko, leaned forward as the truck ran into the corner and the destination of a hostile village came into clear view. As the convoy entered the clearing, Kanko noticed a child running from the gates towards the village center. The village wasn't supposed to be inhabited. Kanko failed to process his thoughts or make a complaint before the gunfire resounded from this village, quickly to press or reciprocated by the convoy. Kanko watched in horror as the tanks circled around the village, laying waste into the settlement with an uninterrupted fire. The representative's voice echoed over the radio, jubilant over the success of the upgrade. So, struck silent. Kanko stared at the platoon and now they the town, home by home. Wish granted. You do what you must, you know? So, uh, interest only fi by 5%, so. Um, yeah, I'll really do this one, one more time, maybe. Which one is, is this one? Mountain. Yeah, you definitely could use some more mountains. What do we have here? So, a Guangdong Efficiency Ordinance. Submit Fujitsu as a chief provider of high caliber computing equipment all throughout Guangdong. Uh, increase miscellaneous income or growth, better industrial equipment, increases current product quality by 5%. Well, it's not allowed, the rolling grows. <clears throat> uh, when the general law, the standardization of the Zhujin identity, which purported to rationalize the criteria by which one could be applied to become a Zhujin, was passed, instead of a firestorm of controversy in the streets of Guangdong, it was also resorted to the penning of a thousand hostile essays and editorials in various newspapers throughout the state. Eventually, the controversy faded, as most media controversies do, but as the time passed, it came roaring back into life and it was truly intense one year into the edict's its existence. For the first time in years, Japanese, Zhujin, and Ch Chinese were practically united in their displeasure of the law, though they were, of course, in disagreement about the specifics. Some angry Japanese claimed that the edict had been counterproductive of the Japanese guiding rule and the commonly granted influence. Other more liberal Japanese chose to apply for Zhujin just as this themselves, but the more delusional counterparts drawn on the ire of many. 
Some Chinese managed, but by the skin of their teeth, to make it to Zushin Cess, and though they, uh, might have made it. I thought they might have made it. However, despite all the material benefits and expanding opportunities that Zhu Jin Sass didn't need to offer them, the new work pressure still dug into them beyond a belief. The Ibuka Monster's insistence on its excellence only worsened that situation, and some Zhu Jin ended up throwing back into the Chinese status due to perceived incompetence and errors that the Fujitsu rule government emphasized. They were left at a loss. They did not want to go back into the low grade factories and backbreaking labor, but could not come up with anything else to do. Though none of this was enough to cause instability yet, analysts would later look at the back of these experiences as a hallmark of what was to come. Another concerning development, of course. Go into that one, why not? If we have it, we must use it. Good! Are we done with that one? Yeah, we're done with the mountains, nice. So we need jungle conditions. Got a lot of mountains here, though. You can help them out, though. Hey, advancements in computation technology. Ooh. <coughs> Straight crossing is gonna suck. Sanctuary. Um, the Hoden of Koshu's leading Shinto shrine seemed to shrink under the midday sun, with the golden chrysanthemums adorning the main gate lacking in luster. The complex was uh, deserted, with a stillness that stood up for the honored dead, touched up with a pa pallid mimicry of life. Um, even if Tokyo demanded that the shrines be erected overseas to ensure Japanese citizens were connected to the Empire and Spirit, uh, spiritually they never been a guiding principle of Japanese life in Guangdong, of course. The uh, shrine saw more. <clears throat> Visitors at the start of a fiscal year than on the festival day is all devoted to more personal fortune than spiritual veneration. But even for the low standards of Guangdong, the shrine had fallen into disuse over the past several years, of course. There are no tenants sweeping the grounds of fallen leaves, and even though the head priest was nowhere to be found, leaving only the occasional gust of wind to haunt the empty shrine. The shrine was clearly uh, clean occasionally, for the appearance's sake. Rimu went when the consul general inevitably paid a visit, and then left to gather dust. Nobody had time for antiquated faiths, when everyone's mind had been forcibly converted to the cold, exact dogma of a book as Guangdong, but work as the chief executive finest solace, having created a gospel in his own image. An answer only the creator could provide. Oh boy. More interest, please. Yeah, we definitely need more interest. He's more political power overall. Work harder. Question of infrastructure. One language. <coughs> the infant field of computing has already seen the rise of several different programs and languages throughout the developed world. COBOL and AIMACO in the US and the ASPRA in Germany to compete with these rival superpowers, Guangdong needs its own programming language. Shoujin's already made inroads into Guangdong as a programming language of Fujitsu Limited. Standardizing uh, on Shoujin will help ease future developments and provide a common framework for new improvements. So the legis, this leg up gives Fujitsu a simply an added benefit, of course. 24 days left, huh? 20 wouldn't be bad. Profitability is going to be okay. Average, above average. Um... I don't want to lower support anywhere. Yeah, so 10 days. We do that one and call it then, maybe. Does it increase by 5 or 10? Oh, yeah, I guess we're not going to get even more profitability. If that's the case, we'll probably just do this one, maybe? 5 days? Fine, whatever. Still all mountains? These guys are struggling definitely up there. Alright, so that's the case. <clears throat> we could have actually done this one too, but we don't have enough time now, which sucks, but whatever. So that's what we'll end up with. About 80-something. 80 83% or so. Not great. But it could be a lot worse, I guess. And it's already become a PTRG, oh, PTRG mission tracker. Nice, Silicon Delta. Yep. Um, Cruise Japs, Expat Support. All right, why not? Oh, there it is, everybody. Straight crossing jungle conditions, really. The Falcom 23010.
This unit said, sled to the Hong Kong afternoon peak. A sun peeked through the messily closed blinds and set a crowd of faceless, nameless individuals gathered around a colossal wooden pillar in front. On the front, a slab of metal displayed a constellation of red and green lights blinking lazily in the dark. To the salary man, the Falcom 23010 was an unknowable machine. A man on the desk tore a piece of paper and peered at it intently. Muttering to himself, he nodded and beckoned for another worker to come. After a short while, the partner turned to the crowd and said only two words, It works. Over the coming months, more and more pillars wheeled themselves into the workplace. Many failed to notice or care where the, the human calculations once sat. Pouring over hackish sums and monstrous equations, now there was a Falcom 23010. They were shrines of a new era of business, where men could rely less on the fruits of others, but the whirling and turning of machines, or millions, of intricate parts assembled into a machine. The Falcom 23010 did not ask for breaks, did not unionize, nor did ask for raises. The boss would praise Fujitsu's new strategy of a rental system, where machines could be paid per month for a fraction of the cost and order more. Eventually, the machines came to dominate the office, and one could barely find a place where the computer didn't reside. Some complained, some embraced the new devices, most, most went on with their day, but the computers paid little heed either way. The only existence they ever knew was at their job. Not bad, but we could have, we could have done better. 936, huh? If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Yep, of moths and men, those fates beat away at the fluttering of those wings. Dancing, dancing. I think I read some before. I'm pretty sure I have. Alright, yeah, so that's all good. Come over here. A little out of town, but I don't really care. Not a lot of jungle around here, eh? Speed of light. The world's getting faster, and we have to keep pace. Variations of this appear to be a favorite cliche of the technological firms. Hawking this or that new product in a place like Guangdong, therefore, was nothing less than conventional wisdom, another truism. Ibuka felt this all miss a point. Keeping pace was all well and good if one wished to remain a mediocrity. If one sought to keep their head above water rather than excel, if one truly sought the pursuit of excellence, keeping pace with one's fellow mediocrities would not do, instead. One must reach the gods in the winged sandals and golden shirts and leave them in the dust, and so a great web of cable snaked the way from Fujitsu's headquarters through the Pearl Delta, uprooting the ground beneath as they went. Ignorance replaced with information, a million threads pulsed with searing vitality or organic bones that creaked under pressure, and motors had wheezed their ragged machine breaths. The dogmatic human adherence to error would be corrected through the perfection of binary and silicon. The corporeal decrepitude of the past would be uprooted by an unstoppable surges, light, and truth calculated thousands of times per second, and all of them would be free to walk with Fuji 2 in this new future. They would even be so kind as to integrate smaller companies into this new frontier free of charge. Some perhaps would refuse. But most would not, at least for this long. If they remained stubborn, they would simply fade away, unable to compete. No one would ever miss them. Ever onwards. One language. Uh, the world at your fingertips. Giuseppe let all sides lean back in his chair. He found himself at something of a loss. As a bureaucrat and embattled and dysfunctional Zara, his day would normally be full of reports and complaints to file and send up the chain, more than enough to keep him occupied from morning to evening, but last week his office had received some new uh, Fujitsu computers that the government had purchased, which had made his work even more efficient by a factor of at least a, a thousand. He looked around at his co-workers, several of whom seemed to be in a similar boat to him, unsure of what to do with themselves and the day's work made so much shorter. Giuseppe reflected on the possibilities that this could bring. Maybe a more efficient administration could make the Balkan territories at least slightly less of a mess. Or maybe not. He'd be happy if it just made his work easier. I'd rather get paid to be bored than paid to be busy. Emphasize interconnectivity. Nice. As we push the development of electronic and digital technology, we must be diligent against proliferation of incompatible systems, such occurrences. We we'll only place obstacles in our ability to develop Guangdong's electronic industry and hamper efficiency. The chief executive has, to this end, placed heavy emphasis on ensuring that all Fujitsu hardware is as compatible as possible. Let's help ensure future in interconnectivity and guarantee increased efficiency in the area of information sharing and financial transfers. Ooh. We gotta save up for this one. And then please stuff too. That'll be good. Help him out, help him out, help him out, and there you go, nice. There you go. Have fun. Because none of these are jungle, which sucks. Oh, nice, yeah, nice job, guys. Um, we might be able to get the straightest one done here. I don't know, whatever. Because right now, we still have enough votes, right? 30, 52 is not bad. 52 is okay with me. Here goes Eretria. Goodbye, Eretria. Goodbye. Hey, that's, some, that's not bad. Oh, wow. Yakuza are really taking over, aren't they? 
This is not jungle. Hey, advancements of power efficiency technology? Not bad. I think my light bulbs are a bit brighter, but it depends on the cost. Nice. Where are they going to go next? They're going this way. Give them a little more of a time to struggle. That's fine with us. Nice. Um, so these three are actually... That's decent. That's not great. And this one's not not actually not too bad. I don't mind getting rid of this one next, maybe. But that's over... That's 18 over there. That is 21. My god. Oh, no. 20, what am I saying? 25. Um, this one is... 20, uh, tw uh, I guess 18. 18, and then this one is 9 away. So actually, we're going to focus on this one next. The Yakas are not the worst to have. I guess it'll be better. What language? Ah, oh, crap. We'll get that one too. Dance in the same tomb. Uh, official memorandum, Bureau of Innovation and Technology, as of 10th of October, 1965. All electronic of computation of devices and government usage are to be compatible with and operating under the latest version of the F F Show Gen programming language. This measure has been enacted to ensure modernity and mutual compatibility within the public sector. F. Shogen has been chosen for its versatility, simplicity of use, and of installation to this end. All non-compatible devices are to be removed from government service. If your department currently possesses outdated devices, please inform the relevant logistical personnel immediately. Also, an employed computer specialist who are unfamiliar with the program in F. Shogen are required to undertake the necessary training at a time and location to be determined by the region. Have a pleasant day! So, we got it done? Yeah. We got in jungle conditions? Well, technically, these are jungle conditions. Well, not, why not? A digital foundation. As a result of our efforts to build up our electronic infrastructure, the chief executive now feels confident enough to push for a bold new initiative. The movement of Fujitsu Limited's data and services into completely digital space. The novel initiative will not only estimate Fujitsu's place as one of the most innovative companies within the sphere, but also set an example for arrivals in the Three Pearls. Soon, Sony and Masashida will be itching to move their operations into the digital world on electronic servers built by Fujitsu. Nice. We're down here. And we're getting better. Ah, see, there goes the Soviet Ukrainians. Did you win yet? You need a PTR tracker done, so it really matters to me. But my God, you're losing hard. Go and give us a slight break. How better? How better are they losing here too? That's my question as well. Ah, they're doing okay. They're doing okay. Oh, hello. What the heck? Can't buy die. What are you doing? Naughty boys and girls. I've been there yet, which is fine with us. We do want to broader corrupt officials too, so we must wait for that one. Build her up. Wait till they attack again. There you go. But you're probably going to lose anyways, but whatever. A digital foundation. It doesn't look like they can get any more supplies, so we'll be doing fine. Like Guangdong Efficiency Ordinance. Yet another test of our competence has come. The Efficiency Ordinance, the pinnacle of our recent efforts, aims to implement computer installation quotas upon all businesses within our borders as an additional prerequisite for legal status. As the benefit comes threefold, the elimination of stagnant small businesses with inadequate funding, the massive boost of Fujitsu's own revenue as it generously provides society with computerized equipment and the optimization of state management and production. All in all, it poised to be another enormous leap towards Guangdong's brilliant destiny. Provided, of course, the other representatives in the Legislative Council give up their on their haughtiness and be cooperative for once. Have you gotten any better yet? No. Product design. Um, <clears throat> I think I read this one before, sir. But uh, Yamauchi wandered alongside the assembly line, a worried frown on his face. The deadline for Nintendo's modernization plan was fast approaching, and so far he had nothing. He'd been visiting numerous Nintendo manufacturing plants in an effort to gain inspiration, but the stifling air of the assembly floor had not provided him with any new answers. He soon spied a man in blue overalls tinkering with something on a nearby workbench. Approaching the man, you mouth, you could see that he was playing with a plastic toy. The toy was composed of a number of crisscross connected plastic beams that the man operated with little handles to close and open, functioning as an extended arm. On the far side of uh, the workbench were a number of screws which the man was attempting to stand upright using the extending arm. Yamauchi watched the man play in silence for a while before approaching. What are you doing here then? Uh, Yamauchi asked. 
Oh, Mr. Yamachi, so our is just nothing to do right now. I'm just waiting until I'm needed. He dropped the toy on his desk, awkwardly placing his arms to his side. I don't care about that. What is this? Yamachi asked, picking up the plastic toy, grabbed it by the handles, moving it open, and closed repeatedly. The man was surprised at Yamachi's interest, but relaxed. That's just something I made for myself. It's silly, really, but I thought it would help pass the time. More of a children's toy, really. Yamachi chuckled, and he reached out to lay a hand on the man's shoulder. Well, tell me, what's your name? What do you do here, Yamachi asked. I work in machine maintenance, sir. My name's Gunpai Yokoi. The man responded. Yamachi lifted his head. Or Sam. I'm taking this with me, then, Mr. Yokoi. I'll reach out to you soon. I think you have a promising career ahead of you at the Nintendo Playing Card Company. Yamachi turned to leave the building, playing with an extended hand as he went. Lists of marketable names run through his head as he planned for Nintendo's new major release. He finally found the future of Japanese entertainment. The era of the playing card is over. Battle for Atali. That is so weak, my god. They're doing better here, though. They really are. Even though the supplies eating everything up that they have. Which sucks. But oh well, it gives us good experience. It, makes, it gives them more, you know, it's literally just more experience the entire time. But happy December, everybody. Oh, you're attacking? You're probably going to lose. Just saying, bro. Just saying. Just keeping it real with you. Anything up here yet? Ooh. Nope. So, let's reduce corruption by more. Desperate measures, huh? Well, we're okay right now. Uh, increases miscellaneous income, increases the next product's minimum base and quality. Uh, due to administrative digitization, admin efficiency will continue to improve. Love it. Imposter syndrome. And at least with the twice the number of floating point operations per second as the previous model, the Falcom 2350 is poised to drive an accounting revolution, both in government and in, private, this, in the private sector. Ibuka dramatically swept his hands to his sides, guiding the audience's gaze towards the newly installed computer banks that stood behind his podium. The newly Install computer banks that still behind his uh, podium. Or the, the new machines in the Guangdong complex will greatly reduce the administrative overhead and pave the way for a functional and efficient Guangdong, exactly what the investors needed to hear. <clears throat> Applause came from the crowd, something that Ibuka had come to expect in his tenure, still something in the back of his mind tugged at him. He cannot say that he was the mastermind behind the Falcom series, is at least part of that distinction with Ikeda Toshio. The computer visionary would enter Fujitsu several years earlier than he did, and who inducted Ibuka into the industry after the Tokyo Taylor merger. It was Ikeda's guidance that allowed Ibuka to spread his wings and soar into the heavens, something that deserved appreciation. Still cannot deny the glee they felt of him being the one standing on the platform, not only the public face of the Falcom series, but the leader of an entire nation state. He still enjoyed imagining the look on his fierce face when they received the news of his ascension. However, the nagging feeling had not gone away. His inner, inner critic aimed to question at him, wanting to get not produce a satisfying answer to him. Had he ascended this far on his own merits, or merely because the original leaders of Fujitsu and Furukawa allowed him to? Uneasy lies is the head that wears a crown. Nice. Ah, uh, repurpose non productive lands. Oh, I should have this one earlier. Power rate began to improve, though. Industrial urban integration. More growth. There are significant tracts of undeveloped and unused lands spread between the three pearls, areas filled with unproductive slums, run down industrial facilities and undeveloped fields, having gone underutilized by the Suzuki administration. A book has come with a new scheme to turn these areas into a new industrial sector or center, one capable of competing with even Manchukuo's vast industrial machine. To begin with, these backwards estates will be brought up by the Guangdong's corporations to be cleared out and developed into new productive industrial establishments and housing complexes. Those displaced simply had to find accommodations elsewhere. Tabloid phenomenon, secrets unveiled. Oh. Uh, a campfire officer admits a shocking deal with Chinese narcotics peddlers. The lone wolf, Colonel Miyazaki, denies all involvement with the rogue agent, complicit or incompetency. <clears throat> Protect our citizens, not your wallets, of course. Uh, bloated salaries, washing streets with drugs. Is this what you want your taxes spent on, of course? Uh, thousands of uh, tons of Manchurian shipping arrive every day. How many are drug ships? <laughs> oh, look at this, nice. Betrayal, who places the military police? Commissioner or promises crime sweep, no comment from Kenpai Tai. More on page three. Nice. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, yeah, we're doing okay. And we hit 26 billion. Point three, yeah, hopefully. I actually, oh yeah, I thought you were winning there for a second there. Yeah, hold on. A contingency. Well, uh, the golden light seeped its way through the blinds, landing softly in the face of Kuno Miyazaki. The faint hint, faintest hit a calm in an ocean of administrative chaos. Several days of relentless giving and reaping or repeating orders. Boxes being ran back and forth between the paper shredder and the incinerator. Phone calls bearing from IJA Command in the Guangdong, Camp Patai Command in Tokyo. And all sorts of random jokers with enough influence to find his number. He hadn't had a good night's sleep in all that time for the sake of his sanity. He said, and soon, maybe some light would help. 
He opened the blinds, the full view of Koshu appearing before him. Miyazaki went in stray black dots, bumbled their way through the streets amidst, amongst buildings whose size and regularity served to obfuscate any sense of meaning. Everything looked exactly like it did yesterday. And how it looked next month, and Miyazaki did not like what he saw. The first and best chance to rectify the situation had withered to the vine, and the local branch were too busy with damage control to succeed alone. So much for his career, but no use putting it off. He picked up the phone and dialed it sinking. Miyazaki, is it come tell me of your failure and our need to clean up after your mess? Miyazaki considered arguing, then thought better of it. Yes, sir. Well, lucky boy that you are. We already have a contingency in motion, working from within this time. An amount of money will be sent to you shortly. Make sure it ends up in the right hands. Sir, yes, sir. Oh, crap, no. We can try it again, but I don't think it's going to happen, son. Happy January, though, everybody. Happy January. Honestly, we're just kind of wasting our time. Oh, jungle's right here. Yeah, screw it. We're going this way. That's just better for us, anyways. Oh, there goes the product cycle stuff. Nice. Well, so much for being nice. Shifting alliances. Oh, crap. We have to go to this one. Please go ahead. Uh, Crud Fathers. Uh, five days. You know what? I'm not going to touch that one until we get the vote passed. So, 938. If you're wondering about this, please go ahead. Do we got it or do we got it? Ah, the passes. Before we start the today's hearing, I'd like to say a few words in favor of the efficiency ordinance. The ordinance in question was easily passed through today's hearing. Ibuka lobbying for the digitization of paper documentation of every private company in Guangdong. Ibuka further recommended by that the harbor used to digitize these documents to be supplied by Fujitsu, which would be marked down for purchase by the state. While well, Matsushita gets somewhat of an approval, Marie remains apprehensive, citing that a third party should be contracted to construct the hardware used for the digitization. Kamai did not add a comment. There's a vote, vote, vote passed, of course. The consequences of the ordinance can be expected to be somewhat minimal. Aside from a rise in Fujitsu company net worth, of course. Um, Administration is also expected to improve its official documentation of private companies will certainly improve and allow them to be held more accountable by the state. The vote passes. Hey, look at that. Oh, they're already trying and to beat us up a little bit. Go with two and then go with three, four, whatever it is. God damn. But I want less corruption, which we already did, so. We're not going to threaten to attach representatives right now. Pretty military factory, so. Um, here. That's all you get. Industrial or integration. Well, if you're too limited, maybe the mostly focused on electronics, there's no reason why we cannot apply our efficiency and innovation to the field of real estate. As part of the efforts to build up Guangdong's industry, Fujitsu will begin the construction of new worker tenements, or tenements, uh, plant, near plant industrial establishments. These gigantic buildings will adequately house large numbers of low-paid laborers needed in our factories at a reasonable cost. After all, we're not meant to go and we have no interest in working with our laborers to death. Ah, oh, with their glares that watchful and uniforms well pressed, the men of the Kemp I tie wait the next order. <laughs> They knew exactly what would follow. Every movement had been carefully choreographed with weeks in advance. As knowledge of the drugs being stored in this location had been withheld from the police for months, they certainly had more than enough time to drill the planet themselves. Two sharp whistle blasts later confirmed cacophony was let loose. Bullets streaked in and flailed aimlessly out. The final shots of the gangsters were smothered by the charge of the camp by tie, and the sun returned to the streets a great deal more than before. The hall from inside was paraded to the rows of peering eyes and now hid far behind the streets. The message had been made. The camp by tie were law. Nothing would be allowed to get in their way, not even the police. The police can only clean up after the camp by tie. So... 2, 14, um, 18, 8. Do what we must. Look at that. The minute I shift. Um, I think there was one before, so. Yep, I read this before. Gong Fa He Fa Choi. There's a good question to read. Ah. Good. Alright. He's be exceeding three conditions, but we'll see. All right, uh, we're doing okay on a lot of this stuff, actually. Ticker tap dance. Master shoots his mouth, functioning multiplied, no end of sight. Fujitsu fumbles yet again. Sony's uh, stock slips and slides. I've heard this one before too. Hitachi wins again. Hey, nice. Looks like we're really just going to kill that division there, but we'll see. Ali Wibowo. These ones don't make that sound anymore. Oh, set of cameras and the offices, that'd be nice. Soft targets. Um, if you run up at this, please go ahead too. 
22 seats, huh? My god. Sour appetites. Tsung had gone to the wet markets for dinner when a great haired rice vendor waved him over. You, the Ricardo, you're from Huizu, aren't you? I never forget a face. Tsung could recognize the accent as being from Huizu as well. The feeling of kinmanship was a fleeting thing in a place like Guangdong, certainly not with Ibuka running things. <clears throat> How fresh is this stuff? Tsung asked. A special I can afford from Saigon. The vendor picked up a grain of the stuff and flicked it into his cart. Everywhere else in processing plant around here are gobbling up rice like crazy. Our boys are working the fields out here are already working with outdated equipment. And it's barely enough. Half the stuff I sell. As, uh, even I sell as, uh, Vietnamese imports. I can see why. It's soon. Muse as he gazed up at the sign above, thinking the same everyone else was, and that the fish vendor had just confirmed. The price of rice was rising in Guangdong, where grain stability had been shaken for decades prior. Homegrown food was becoming more and more of a rarefied thing. All Sun could really do was weather was to gather a bull for himself and say to the vendor with more than a little more acid in his voice, so, so much for rebook of self sustainability. The steel bill, huh? Our pieces are replaced with the land bought up and the tenements ready. We can finally begin the process of building an industry capable of competing with Machuqua. Central this effort will be the creation of a new steel belt between the three pearls, and an economic and industrial center from which the capital, labor, and material can be harnessed and, of course, exploited. The chief executive of Guangdong Fujis will throw their full weight behind the project, utilizing every, favor, every personal favor, connection, and resource at their disposal. We'll offer tax breaks and incentives, whatever it takes, for if Guangdong has established itself as a sphere's place to do business, we can spare, of course, no expense. Banner recognition. Uh, I've read this one before, so if you want to read, read about this, please go right ahead. So, Hitachi, chief executive, we're. Uh, we're just straight up fighting Hitachi. How are you not getting any more experience? Hey, if you want to buy this one too, I can open you. Get back to work. Nice. Actually, where are we at for approval, real quick? Can we burn a little bit of approval or no? No. How do you not have it yet? There you go. Crack down on corruption. The national team. Uh, let's see. If you're wondering about this, please go ahead. I've read this one before as well. It's too much for us to handle. Hang on for as long as we can. Okay, we'll do that one. What touches uh, how many seats? 26. That's actually not good for us. There you go. You're gonna become a jungle rat, eh? Well, maybe. We'll see. Different kind of brilliance. A new pearls for the new era. Repletion zones. So, you know, I'll let you guys decide. Should we do a different kind of brilliance? Or should we do new pearls for a new era? Actually, I kind of like want to... I kind of want to do this one for more Zujin support, but... I don't know. Should we do raw materials for the sphere? Or should we do our own components? Let me know in the comments below. As well as, you know, we'll build on what we have as well. Versus looking out for the unexpected, which I kind of prefer this one. I want to look out for the unexpected, probably this one. I'll probably want to do this one. So let me know with these two. A different kind of brilliance versus a new pros with a new era. As well as raw materials for the sphere. Let me know in the comments below as we'll finish this one out with a couple more uh, focuses. One or two. Maybe one more. We'll see. Now we gotta start cutting down these guys again. Massive congestion at Koshi Airport. Are you going to buy this? Please go ahead. Um. I'm pretty sure it's, uh, maybe not. High ranking military officials were driving around expensive new Mitsubishi Debonairs. Um, the legislative council members were sporting new watches as the Ibuka Masu entered their office in the council chambers to start their day's work. He was greeted by a wide grin from one of the policemen guarding his door, revealing a golden tooth where the last week there had been, of course, none. Money was in the air, like ozone before a storm. Unsurprisingly, the first report of the day came from the whip. Hitachi was at it again, flushing money in the country at an alarming place. Where it had only been a step up instance of the usual horse shooting that went on in Guangdong, by now it had been reached proportions suggesting something deeper of what, of course, was at play. The money was struck in Guangdong saw military men, influential legislative council members, yes, but also the colonels of the garrison's regiments surrounding the capital, as well as senior bureaucrats in the government departments. Bribery was on this sort of scale, cannot be the work of Hitachi alone. The whip concluded, most likely, both Mang Yo and Nissan were assisting. As the whip left the room, the Bukamasu puzzled over the possibilities. These were hard-nosed businessmen who spent every day ringing dimes and nickels out of their destitute Chinese factory workers. But it wasn't in their nature to be so prolific, but whatever the ultimate aim. Hitachi was, wasn't the only company with money here in Guangdong. Time to bring out our own wallets. I don't want any more corruption, so we're going to have to wait for this one. Which is a little worrying, not going to lie. Peace conference is over, huh?
Yuku Aki. A prominent artist. Ooh, actually, you know what? I'd have read this one before, too. The very same, yeah. Uh, Honest Horribles. Uh, I think I've read this before. I just did it with a different executive. This one, too. In the dim light of his office, Chief Executive of Ibuka Masaru leered the documents that lie on his desk. The burden of proof was uh, such a powerful thing, wasn't it? High definition. Scenes of Camp Ataya squads intimidating airport staff and the Manchurian linked cargo planes splayed across his mind, of course. Why? Why would Itachi try? A pull of a scheme this large, they seem to operate just fine under his rule. Just as they did in Manchukuo. Was somehow Manchukuo making Hitachi do this for some reason? Were they on the brink? The worst and most increasingly likely reason for the Camp Ataya and Hitachi's escalation across the Chief Executive's mind. Of course it did, try as you might try to dismiss it. The reason that everything was unfolding now was all because of Hitachi's pieces were in place. All he needed was a coup de grace. Shaking away the thought, the chief executive read on. The meaningless jargon coalesced into a dread instilling incidents, incidents and reports. At the end, the police commissioner who had written the report recommended four courses of action to do with the power play. The first would reckon with the garrison in Camp Ataya directly and bring him into the cold, day, uh, cold daylight. The second sent out a feeler for contact within the Manchurian government and see whether they understand what's going on in Guangdong. The third and fourth method was to go to either Tokyo or Nanjing for help. While banking on this support was a risky move, both nations had the power to move things their way and help fully understand what was going on under our noses. Fifth option, of course, not see in the report. So there's another option. If they get the right leads, twist the right arms, and disappear the right people, perhaps we can do it ourselves. After all, was Guangdong with a shining monument to the doing it yourself mentality? Japan trusts us, right? Japan should trust us. They should. I mean, they will. But they should. Let's keep cutting down. The Last Supper. Nobody in the Lee family felt like talking, although they made their best efforts regardless. Chen stared down to the rice and saw the pork beneath him. It wasn't like he wasn't hungry. His shifts were too far, far too long for him to not have a healthy appetite, but it was the last time he would see his mother's cooking for the foreseeable future. Maybe the last night in his old claustrophobic apartment the Lee family had been forced into. He still thought of it this way, but all the same, there was something much more human in the peeling wallpaper and the endless generating cobwebs than where he was going, less sterile, certainly. Leung was doing his best act if nothing was amiss. Uh, recounting a joke one of his co-workers had told him with, with little enthusiasm. May had spent much of the dinner smiling unnaturally, repeatedly telling Chung how proud she was, and encouraging him to eat more. Why, for the most part, remained silent, speaking only when spoken to. And then usually with one word responses, as she had done since she first heard the news. Conspicuously absent was Hay. It was after some work-related tasks, theoretically. Chun and Hay were on the same boat, both whisked away from the homes into some purpose but holding pens through the unemployment through the employment contracts in order to boost efficiency or some other crap. The difference was the Japs had given Hay the premium brand dog food in the gilded cage. He preferred to his own mother's cooking, Chun and wondered. No, that wasn't fair. He was still his brother, and Chun could not let him get hurt, but what could he do? None of this was helping Chun's mood, and he did his best to think about something else. There'd be plenty of time for bitterness later, but even as he did his best to smile and enjoy his last night at home, the worry remained a consistent presence in the back of his mind. What will become of us, of course? What will become of us? Addressing workforce defections or defects. The workforce of Guangdong is indolent and unruly. They serve as one of the most evident illustrations of the inept sloth and apathy that are harbored by the human consciousness. Decadence that hinders the advancement of progress. The truly gifted, the talented, the men who possess ability and capability are prevented from escalating up to the ranks due to the millions of incapable cretins who enforce their counterproductive culture. This inimical culture, of course, will end. Fujitsu will be cleansed of inability, which will be followed by the other corporations of Guangdong. The culture must be exterminated, as it serves no benefit to us and, of course, progress. Maybe in Tokyo. Uh, Ibuka Masu shook Consul General Takashima's hand, and they proceeded to sit across from each other inside Takashima's office. Takashima was the first to breach the reason uh, 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 after formalities were exchanged. What brings you to my office outside of the usual scheduled visits? The chief executive <clears throat> replied, it concerns Guangdong security and the recent incidents that I'm sure you're aware of. Takashima nodded, and Ibuka Masu continued. Oh, look at this. However, uh, the, uh, the recent incidents are harming the investor climate in the region. However, our security services believe there may be a link we wish for you to look into. It's in their opinion that interference in the investigation may be originating from Manchukuo. We would ask you that you look into the potential evidence that may arise from certain the recent activity of Hitachi and Manchukuo. <coughs> Takashima was silent for a moment as he molded the appeal over his head. Before eventually responding, it seems I would be in Tokyo's best interest to look into the matter. I'll contact some individuals and I'll see to, I know to see if I can be done discreetly. I'll notify you if anything of uh, note turns up. Thank you, Consul General and the challengers. God dang it. Should be okay regardless, but still. How do you not have it done yet? My god. This is still jungle too, right? Yeah. Extremely hot. The findings. Previously, we could only make assumptions about the Camp Ata's connection to the incident at the warehouse. We know that they were connected somehow, but we didn't know how, who to, and what exactly they were doing. Yet, Chief Executive, the report underlines clearly what's happening. Police Commissioner Kunis Yasu, sitting opposite of the Chief Executive, thumbed through the report. 
thought you meant a management. Caught inside a warehouse, trying to take an officer hostage in exchange for clear passage. Dead? You couldn't get him alive? I could have been, he could have been great use to us. We believe, based on the information we have, that the employee was sort of, as a sort of observer from Hitachi to oversee the operation. He appeared to have executed our police officers, so our men opened fire to prevent more casualties. It turned out the officer was unharmed, and the employee merely staged it to look like he had been shot. We do not know why, but our leading theory is that he wanted to prevent his relatives and Koshi from being affected by the treachery. So he took the easy way out. A fool, he blew Kamasu to mumble before raising his voice once more. No matter, it's darning enough. Darning enough to know that I'm not being paranoid anymore. Hitachi and the Camp Aitai, and God knows who else are in league with each other to undermine me. Look at what they did. It seems they are getting their sandals wet from the cross in the Rubicon. It reads like a cool plot. The plot is supposed to be a real threat to the, mice, to the security of Guangdong, yes. Time is of the urgency. They must be stopped, Chief Executive. The Commissioner straightened his back, ready to receive the orders for a complete crackdown. Uh, regardless of a violent purge of these unsavory individuals that only make us look weak, incompetent, unworthy of sovereignty, perhaps. The diplomatic ramifications of such an endeavor would most likely get us replaced regardless. Chief Executive, the Commissioner slouched slightly, unsure of what if he was overstepping his boundaries. What do you propose we do? We have a chat with Camp Ata, I won't attic, and someone get me the number for the Japanese Consul General? Um, I've read this one before. If you want to use this one, please, please go right ahead again. I just want to see if we can get this one done at all. I just want us to be profitable for the love of God. Is it not here out here? I guess not. Happy April, though, everybody. Happy April. <coughs> That's gonna suck. Underworld. Oh, come on. Solemn representation. If you want to displease your head, this war of yours will come in, or I'll end it for you. Nice. We have uncovered their plans. Influence and legislative because are no longer a direct threat. Nice. We're going to keep going to towards this one, though, because we want to lower that as much as possible. It's just not going. It's not firing. Denial. I read this one before, too. If you want to do this one, please do it, too. If you want to go on, get, come on the line now. He's about to do something very stupid. Yes, he is. Hey, we got this one back. Nice. Brought an accomplishment, of course. Jones' new home was certainly cleaner than his old one. Between the shifts, one typically spent the time walking down brightly lit white corridors between various kinds of whites, undecorated rooms. Eat a plain bowl of rice on a plain white plastic canteen tables. Lie in your white sheets on your white bunk bed and stare at the white ceiling. Maybe listen to the white noise on the company radio while you're at it. Watch all that offending grime fade into the whiteness into the communal showers, then dry yourself with off with a white towel. Borscht, the factory remained filthy as ever, so Chun managed to avoid becoming nostalgic for dirt, for the most part, of course. While the inside of the tenements were dominated by white uniformity, the outside was marked by discordant gray. Pillars of smoke billowed through the cloudy sky from all around, leaving soft charcoal blotches on the granite living facilities. Jim himself was sitting on the undeveloped patch of gray concrete foundation with his fellow workers, wearing a gray smock and still inhabiting the gray space between the sleep and the city. The foreman stood in front of them, talking about how the new bold undertakings of the confinement had made it possible. Trying hard not to look at the script too often, the enormous flat plain they all stood on was to become the site of a great new enormous processing and storage complex. This sort of the aims of Ibuka's new steel built project. Without, with their sacrifice, new industry could be, now be built. So more people could be sacrificed, so more industry could be built, so more people could be sacrificed, of course. On and on it went. Jones' ears perked up when he heard the foreman say something about how pr proud of the factory workers all must feel, and he had to fight down the urge to calmly walk over and strangle the man. Stupid pride, the crap pay, long hours, idiotic management, being dragged from his village to, in a, co to a koshu slum with a speechless void, and he was meant to have a sense of pride? Because another batch of human uraniums can be made? Alright, thought John, looking at his co-workers, you want us to be proud, boss? Let's see what I can do. Something's gotta give. If you're about this, how dare I? Please go right ahead. Exhausted the possibility to try and coup us, and have also exhausted the Nissan funds, which stops a special annual growth. Nice! Oh, it's already April, though. It's not great. Um, so we can't get this one up, but we're gonna end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll also continue trying expanding the state of Guangdong economically with Ibuka Masaru. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.